In this video, we're going to be talking about while loops and why they are important for your programming here. Not only is it going to be important for you to know how to, this works, but we do have some projects that are going to utilize while loops uh, so that uh, you definitely want to pay attention to this module. So let's go ahead and get in the code here, and then we'll talk a little bit about when do we want to use these while loops and why are they important, right? So inside here, I have our basic file setup. I have a Python folder inside there. I have lessons, and then inside there, I have while-loops.py. All right, so while loops, they are basically a block of code that will be executed until a certain condition is met, until maybe we reach the game winning point, right? Until player one wins, we want to still stay in the game. And that's one of the main reasons why while loops are really great, because it's going to be conditional repetition to execute code, and we don't know how long it's really going to take in order to get there. All right, so that's that's really why we want to use these while loops. But let's go over an example. Okay. So let's go ahead and create a simple example here. We're going to count just like we did on the very first one when we did loops with you all. We're going to count from one to five. And for that, we're going to create a variable here called count. And we're going to set that equal to one. Now here's the while loop syntax it's going to be the following. We're going to say while count is less than or equal to five, then I want to go ahead and print out the count. Once I get done with the printing of it, I do need to manually increase it to a count plus one. All right, let's go ahead and take a look to see how that looks. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. And we do in fact get the one through five. Right, So something to pay close attention to, this right here is very important. As long as this condition is true, we're going to stay inside of the loop. I want to get, make sure that you understand that. While we stay in this loop, while this condition here is true, we're going to stay in this loop here and continue and continue and continue. It is possible to get into an infinite loop, but we'll talk about that in a different module. All right, but this is just a real simple example on how we can create a one through five. All right, now, like I said, typically we're not going to do this, uh, but maybe we can think about it in the bigger picture is, hey, uh, let's go ahead and stay in this loop until a player gets to five points and then they win. So again, just think a little bit bigger than what we're trying to do right now with just the small steps. All right, in this next example, I would like to show you how we can utilize a while loop to capture a user's input. And it's going to continually display and be ready for a command to be put in until the user types in the word exit. And that will trigger the program to exit. So let's go ahead and run through it. And again, with programming, everything's about following patterns. So just like we need some sort of variable to capture the user's input to store it in memory, just like this count right here is outside the while loop, we're going to do the exact same thing here. We're going to have this be our user input example. So user input example. And we're going to do something like this. User put, and we're going to set that to an empty string, just like the pattern that we saw up here. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to say while user input does not equal set. Now, what do we want it to do while it's inside of this loop? Well, we want to prompt the user to answer a question, or we want to prompt the user to have input, but we want to store that into the variable that we created up here. So we'll do something like this. We'll say user input, and then go ahead and type the word exit to quit. And then at the very bottom here, it's just going to mirror what the user has typed in. Just to demonstrate that this variable up here that we created on line 15 being updated by this right here, this line right here. So that's what we're gonna go with 
uh, as far as this goes. Now, whenever we're dealing with user input, uh, unfortunately, we can't use this normal play button that we have up here. And uh, that's because this box over here is read only. So the way that we're going to go about this is we're going to right click this and click on Open Integrated Terminal. Now once you do that, you'll see something that looks just like this down below. And you'll see this little cursor where we can type things in. And again, that's going to be your terminal. If it looks a little busy, feel free to type the word clear. It will clear it out. Or CLS for Windows users typically clears that out as well. Now to get a Python file to run, uh, we want to make sure that first we save the file. And notice that this is saved. Next, we want to go ahead and type in Python. And Mac users will type in Python 3. Uh, I believe Windows users will type in Python. And then we're going to go ahead and hit the space bar. And then we want to type out the file name. And once I start typing the word while, and then I hit the tab button, you're going to notice that the file has completed. It auto completes for you. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the enter key on this. And it says type exit to quit, or I can type whatever I want in here. So I can type hello, and it says that you typed out hello, right? Now, if I type the word quit or exit, it finally ends. Right? Quit didn't work, but exit did. So that is our program that we just put in right here. Now, one of the very beginner problems that a lot of new beginner learners out there think about or try to do. I'm going to go ahead and clear this out here and let me rerun the whole file again. I just hit the up arrow a couple times and that gave me this so I didn't have to type it all out again. But what if I type the word exit all caps and I hit the enter key? Well that didn't work. Well why didn't that work? And if we remember back to back to strings and comparison, right? Because this is a comparison operator. My line 17 has that not equals. That's a comparison. It's because taking it for lowercase, right? It wants this to be all lowercase. We used uppercase here. Those are not equal. So something that you may want to think about is how can I get whatever the user types in to equate to this. And a lot of times uh, beginners out there will do something like and, and then user input not equals and I'm going to go ahead and maximize this here not equals. So, well that's perfect that does work but what happens if and again I'm going to exit out of here clear and then save it and run it again just to demonstrate a few things here. So if I do sit, it now works. But what if I did the following? What if I did E, X, and then an I, and then a T, right? So now we're trying to dummy proof this. So no matter what they typed in, this comparison should work. And the way to go about this is to think to yourself, all right, how can I make whatever they typed in, how can I convert that to be all lowercase? Do we have something out there that can convert whatever the person typed in all to lowercase? And so we do, and we have something here called dot lower, right? And so if we use the dot lower, now this is converting what we typed in all to lowercase, and our comparison only has to match off of this over here. Now, of course, we could use upper here, but then we'd have to change this one to all uppercase. So it does need to match, but typically what you'll see is let's just go ahead and convert everything down to a lowercase in order to get this to work. So again, I'm going to clear out of this, and then I'm going to go ahead and run it in the terminal. And so now I can do EXIT, where the EX is all capitalized, and hit the Enter key. And now I have successfully exited the program. So again, this little tip is going to be very valuable to you to remember for challenges that you might have. And just know that, hey, in, in order for me to get a good comparison based upon what the user has typed in, uh, then this would be what you were 
wanting to use is make everything all lowercase, comparing it to an all lowercase hard-coded string on the right. All right, so that is while loops. Again, we're gonna do a little more practice with some challenges and stuff. There's more examples below this video for you to try out, test out, but I just wanted to demonstrate to you in this video what a while loop is and then maybe a potential use case for it here. All right, we'll see you in the next video.